Merry Feast of Stephen Day. Welcome to worship at St. John on this first Sunday of Christmas and the Feast of Stephen. Pastor Sarah is taking a well-deserved vacation with her family, and we welcome the Reverend Liddy Barlow back to St. John this morning. She's the Executive Minister for Christian Associates of Southwest Pennsylvania, and we pray God will bless her as she leads us in worship this morning. A reminder that all people who are in church must wear face masks at all times, with the exception being those who are leading worship when they are reading or singing. For communion, we will continue to offer traditional bread and wine or grape juice. Prepackaged communion elements are available if you would prefer to receive those, and they will be on the table with the glasses. When you come forward for communion, you should remove your mask as you approach the ministers, and then put your mask back on after you consume the Eucharist. A reminder that everyone who is baptized from any church is welcome to receive communion. If you prefer to just have a blessing, simply cross your arms over your chest. And a reminder that there is no Saturday worship next weekend since it's New Year's Day. We'll have a moment of silence, and then as the bell rings, please stand as we begin our service.
minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your goodwill, and live, may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she has made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 148 responsibly after the antiphon is sung.
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning, friends. It is a great joy to be back at St. John's. Thank you, as always, for your warm welcome. Um, greetings from me and greetings from Christian Associates of Southwest Pennsylvania. Uh, it is such fun to see Christians of so many traditions back in their sanctuaries this Christmas celebrating together. Uh, what joy. We do pray with you. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Kids grow up so fast, don't they? My daughter Pippa used to fit right here in the crook of my arm, and we measured her this week, and she is, she says proudly, five foot six and a quarter inches tall. <laughs> my son Edmund feels like he was born ten minutes ago, but now he is reading Harry Potter and playing first base. One of the kids I used to babysit for is now the vice president of a publishing company in New York City. And your children, your nephews and nieces, it doesn't feel that long ago, does it, when you held them in your arms, when you were buying them building blocks and baby dolls for Christmas. And now they're coming home with husbands and wives and kids of their own. It goes so fast. And Jesus, it seems like it was just two nights ago when we were lighting our candles and celebrating his birth. Okay, it was literally two nights ago. <laughs> but back then, he was just a newborn baby, holy infant, so tender and mild, away in a manger, no crying he makes. But now, the day after Christmas, Jesus is already 12 years old. That went fast. <laughs> The gospel lesson that is assigned for us this morning is the only story that the Bible gives us about what happened to Jesus between the time when he was two, which is approximately when the Magi visited, and when he was 30, when he was baptized by John. This story this morning rips us out of Bethlehem, away from that cozy stable, and into Jesus' awkward teenage phase. His voice is cracking, his face is breaking out, he is no longer a cuddly newborn. Now, Jesus is 12 years old, on the brink of adulthood. He is not a baby anymore, and don't his parents know it. I remember taking family vacations when I was 12. And as much as I truly loved my mom and dad, I also yearned for independence. I thought that I was pretty grown up, and I didn't really want to be hanging out with my parents all day. 
My idea of fun on a vacation was to go to the hotel pool by myself, or maybe make a new friend, or buy something with my own money. And it seems as if Jesus had something of the same thought. His family took their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem that spring to celebrate Passover. And while they were there, Jesus slipped away from his family and headed to the temple by himself. He was growing up. He wanted to do his own thing. And besides, he was beginning to sense that the God that they worshipped at the temple had a special demand on his life. Jesus was beginning to sense that his world was bigger than Nazareth, that his family was bigger than Mary and Joseph, that his destiny was greater than a carpenter shop. He was growing up and coming to terms with his own very special identity. But being the parents of the Son of God was not easy. When Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus was not with them, they panicked and turned around and searched Jerusalem top to bottom, probably fearing the worst. It took them three days to reach the temple. When they got there, they found their son, and contrary to their most anxious imaginings, Jesus had not been kidnapped or sold into slavery. He was not lying dead in a ditch somewhere. He was healthy and happy at the top of his class for Bible study. Mary was distinctly unimpressed by the gold stars that he was earning. She just wanted to know why he had almost given her a heart attack. Kids these days and the ways they drive their parents crazy. Child, why have you treated us like this? Mary said. Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Baby Jesus in his swaddling clothes, would never have treated them like that. I wonder if you remember the very funny but not particularly reverent scene in the movie Talladega Nights where NASCAR driver Ricky Bobby says grace. He prays, Dear eight-pound, six-ounce baby infant Jesus, and his father-in-law interrupts him. Jesus was a man, you know. He had a beard. And Ricky immediately fights back. He says, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm the one who's saying grace. <laughs> and of course, that's ridiculous, but I think we can understand where he's coming from. I think perhaps that's how many of us feel, if we're honest. It's easier to like a baby Jesus than to wrestle with a grown up one. It's easier to love a baby Jesus snuggling on Mary's lap than it is to love a 12-year-old Jesus sneaking away from his frantic parents. It's easier to love a Christmas Jesus in a candlelight glow than it is to love a Good Friday Jesus bleeding and humiliated on the cross. It's easy to feel warm and fuzzy on Christmas Eve as we imagine God born into our world like a smiling Gerber baby. But it's a lot harder to follow Jesus in the regular Monday to Friday world when his hard teachings challenge our status quo. <clears throat> but like it or not, Jesus grew up. Luke tells us that he grows in wisdom and in years, in divine and human favor. The Bethlehem baby becomes a Galilee preacher. The child in the manger becomes the son of man with nowhere to lay his head. That little one who, no crying he makes, gains a voice, a strong one, speaking out for the poor and the forgotten, the sick and the stranger. And if Jesus grows up, then maybe we need to grow up too. Maybe our faith can grow beyond Christmas sentimentality and into the grown-up challenges of discipleship. Jesus was born into our world as a baby, but he didn't stay that way. And maybe accepting the promise of Christmas means growing with Jesus, not leaving him an infant forever. There's a funny book that came out a little while ago called Adulting by Kelly Williams Brown, and it offers 20-somethings steps to follow in order to become adults. Like, step 76, 
put tire changing gear into your trunk. Or step 89, fold your clean laundry promptly. <laughs> or step 263, don't wash your hands while wearing a coat. This will never end in anything besides wet sleeves, dirty wrists, and disappointment. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if we were to develop steps for developing an adult faith, a faith that is mature and developed, wise and strong. Here are a few steps we might begin with. Step one, trust that anyone and anyone may have something important to teach you. I wonder what it was like for the scholars in the temple to have a 12-year-old debating with them amazing them with his insight. It would have been easy for them to get defensive. Hey, I have a master's degree. Can you go back to seventh grade where you belong? But they were willing to listen and willing to learn. Especially in Christian traditions like ours, where the people of the congregation can pray and preach as well as the pastor, people of mature faith realize that wisdom can come from surprising places. A child, a retiree, a janitor, a professor, a dropout, they all have things to say that are worth hearing. And so we listen humbly and well. Or step two, be okay with not understanding. Mary and Joseph had no idea what Jesus meant exactly when he told them that he had to be in his father's house. But Mary treasured his words nonetheless turning them over and over in her mind until somehow they made mysterious sense. Faith doesn't mean getting to the bottom of these stories and having a neat answer to all of our questions. There isn't a simple way to understand the Trinity or atonement or why bad things happen to good people. We can treasure the stories and ideas and teachings of faith even when we can't quite make them add up. We can live in mystery and love mystery and ponder and treasure mystery. We can know that God is real and know that God is love and let God work out the rest of the details. Or step three, find a place where you belong. In the temple, Jesus found a place where his growing understanding and his questions about God could find a voice. A place where he could ask and answer. A place where others would join him in wrestling with the scriptures and discerning God's will. A place he called his father's house. He would go back again and again to the temple. Indeed, his final journey to Jerusalem took place in the same Passover season and ended with another three-day absence from his friends. Like Jesus, we too need community to nurture our growing faith. And if you are here in worship on December 26th, you know the importance of a church home, a place where you can bring your whole self to worship and study, to raise your kids and mourn for loved ones, to ask questions and bake cookies and share supper. We can't do it on our own. Disciples need each other. There are so many more ways to grow. We discover more all the time as we study the Gospels and seek to be more like Jesus. Our faith grows, our trust develops, our discipleship deepens. It may seem to happen little by little, but when we look back, it seems like we grew up so fast. So in this Christmas season, and in this new year, let us welcome with all our hearts eight pounds, seven ounce baby Jesus. But let's not let ourselves stop there. Let's also grow in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. Let's let Jesus grow up and let's grow up ourselves too. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come that way. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Hear us, O oh God. Your compassion is for us. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. Hear us, O God. Your compassion is everlasting. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Your compassion is everlasting. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and in prison, Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are in prison, struggling with addiction, are unwell, or in any need this day. We pray for those who have asked us to do so, remembering Pat, Colleen, Mary Rose, Eileen, Alice, Martha, Joyce, Marjorie, Stephen, Charlotte, Jan, Brandon, Camille, Ruth, Lorraine, Fran, Jim, Amanda, Howard, Patrick, Anna, Bob, Carla, Ricky, Tony, Mark, Lori, Norma, Glenn, Ron, Jim, Bill, Patty, Rebecca, Schmidt, Benno, Ayers, Holvik, Adamson, Parker, Krasowski, and Berg families. Those who travel, those who serve in the military, in law enforcement, and as first responders, and all those who seek the comfort of God's love, who we make now, either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your God. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Hear us, O God. Your compassion is everlasting. You come to us through John and all who have died, yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon and martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. 
Hear us, O God. Your compassion is over us. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
within each cell with every breath. We praise you, God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, God. We give you thanks for your dear Son, at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank, thank you, God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Spirit upon this bread and wine, upon each one of us in this our gathering and throughout your world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Oh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power of Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come and see what God makes known for you. Thank Thanks be to God. God.
thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, and these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared in this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen.